time for our next speaker. Please welcome Lucas. And Lucas is going to talk to us about a short tale about state machine. Lucas, you with us? Absolutely. I'm with you. Do you hear me well? Okay. I can hear you just fine. And I'm going to stop sharing. And now it's all up to you. Hello, everyone. My name is Lukas Hrustio, and today I would like to tell you a short tale about State Machine. For the last seven years, I was working with, at the Silius, which is e-commerce platform, and I was using a State Machine component inside of it to perform some particular operation, mostly oriented around checkout process. Therefore, today I would like to share with you some of my experience, also show you some common pitfalls, but also make some comparison of the ecosystem and what can you get from it. But as I promise you a tale, I need to start that. Some time ago in the company far, far away, there was a software developer, Kelly, who as usual well, walks to the work, took the first task from the Jira and developed in the typical Scrum manner. Of course, all of the other precision, all of other particular meetings were in place. But one day, when our he, uh, our character came to the co company, saw the task like this. So the story is that as a store owner, when the payment is being processed by external system, I want to have it marked as pending. Clearly, without thinking too much, assign themselves to the task and proceed with the implementation. The class was ready. It was enough to just put the Boolean flag there. Of course, it could be either true or false, and the task was done. Expectations are fulfilled. The crew members or just the, his, his or her team um, are satisfied. Ta task is done. Points are burned down. The, that's how the chapter first ends. However, a few days later, in the next spring, there was there were another task. This time, when the payment did not succeed, the store owner wanted to mark the payment as failed. And the first thought was, let's add another flag. Boom, that was easy, wasn't it? But then when Kelly proposed the change and during the code review, some of their of his, of his or her peers mentioned that perhaps it's not the best implementation. What will happen if pending, was, pending will be false and failed was false? Okay, we can assume that it's just a new payment, but what if both of the flags are true? Is it really error, not error prone solution? Was it too fast to implement like this? So Kelly moved back to the uh, keyboard thought a little bit about the implementation and came up with something like this. So we have a set of constants and this will maintain this current state of our application. Who of us didn't code something like this in some time ago? The implementation could be good enough. However, Kelly thought about the time at the university. Back then, our character learned about the concept called state machine. From the academic point of view, it was mostly the mathematical presentation of the graph. But state, but state machine can be something more than just a few numbers and a set of them. It can also be just a graph, so set of nodes where we will expose what are the current places where our entity or whatever abstract concept may be in, and then relation between the concept. So if I have a state new and I have state pending, my transition would be to create something to move from new to pending. Therefore, from the state pending, I can move either to the state paid or to the state failed. But there is no direct connection between new and paid or failed. We need to move through the pending state. The idea was pretty clever. However, Kelly wanted to do some research so we could bring something from ecosystem, maybe take some additional functionalities that are available um, on the market. And let's take a look what we 
can find in ecosystem what the, are the libraries that can make our life a little bit easier. What could we expect from the library itself? First of all, we would need to define state machines. So we would need to define possible states and relations between them. It would be, in the future, nice to protect some of the business rules also with state machine. First of all, for sure, we do not want to shortcut the state machine. Secondly, perhaps some additional services could be called in the meantime. And lastly, some of the operations require some reaction of the system, or at least calling some new service. Therefore, integrate with other services on would be a nice add-on. The first library that Kelly checked was Binzo State Machine. This is the state machine that is used heavily in Cilius. This is the library that I am familiar with the most. Um, it's important to understand that in this config that you configure in this library, you can uh, also configure the callbacks, all the states, etc. Um, it doesn't have a stable release yet. However, as I was using it for the last seven years, I can tell you that it's battle tested, robust, and you can rely on it. If we will check the installation graph, you can see that it's pretty popular library. It reached over uh, 5,000 installations per day, average monthly. Um, in terms of development, you could see that the main activity on the repository is behind us, but it still will maintain. If we will take a look how you can configure this library, it will require you to create an array like this. First of all, we will need to name a graph and define at which property will save the state. Of course, the persistence layer is up to us, but the state machine needs to know where to look for the current state of the application and how it should be updated. Secondly, we have a set of states. New, pending, failed, and paid are just all of the states that we would like to have our, our new payment right now. And late, lastly, we have a set of transition. This is the definition of how we can process from one place to another. In case of process, we can only go from new to pending, from uh, for transition fail from pending to failed. And if we will pay, then we are going from pending to pay. There are no relation between new to pay, etc. As you can also see here, the from key is taking an array, so we can travel from several places. But we, will need, but we will have to always end up with one place. So two always points to the string, the resulting state. Let's take a look into the second library, Symfony Workflow. This library is maintained by Symfony, which is at the beginning a huge uh, advantage of this, because we can be sure that it will be maintained properly with backward policy, uh, with proper backward policy over the years. Etc. Flex support makes it much easier to install it in the Symfony ecosystem if you're using it. Symfony workflow also accepts both workflow and state machine, which are just two different approaches to more or less the same problem. Workflow is the superset of state machine where your, your entity can be in several states at the same time. However, keep in mind that this presentation will focus on the state machine but the things that I will be telling you are also applicable for workflows. If you would like to integrate this library with some external services, you would need to use events and even dispatcher component. Um, another advantage is that this library can be configured with XML, YAM, or PHP, depending on your need, especially if you are using more full stack Symfony. And uh, this library has for sure best documentation as it was also a part of the development process and what the Symfony cares about. Also for the framework this large, it was perhaps the easiest to provide that good documentation. If you will check the installation graph, we can see that this library almost doubled the installation from the Vinzo. It's therefore also pretty popular. 
In terms of code, you could see that even though the first line of code was created in 2014, the true development starts at the end of 2016 and it's maintained until today. Therefore, we can expect probably a new features or improvements over the next months and years. In comparison to Vinzu, this time we have more our object-oriented configuration. We have a builder which allows us to define places and the transition, also in more object or class-oriented manner. We have also a state, that single state variable, which means that we'll be using state machine, also a property where we'll store the data, and then there is a marking store, which will tell us that we'll be using methods, therefore we'll be using getters and setter over the state field to define our workflow. There is a third library already on the market. It's the oldest and most popular implementation, at least in terms of stars. However, it's the least used in terms of daily installation according to the packages. It has some extendability via events and callbacks definition, so it's pretty similar to Vincent's machine, but probably it reached already an end of life. There is one issue where there is a request for new maintainers. So this library has some drawbacks in terms how much it will be maintained over the years. You can see it also on the installation graph that right now it's below 1000 installation. So the least used in between three of them that I mentioned to you. Also the development was pretty dead for a few last years. But with all this knowledge, let's move back to the story. Whatever library we will choose, we have our class payment when we'll need to adjust a few things. First of all, we'll define a, some constant that will be our initial state, the place where the class when created will be in. Then we have two additional functions, get state and set state, which will be used by our state machine. The get state function, you can use it wherever you want just to expose the state. However, set state function, you need to be careful of that, but more about it in the later part of this presentation. If you will choose Visual State Machine, then your implementation could be as simple as this. We are creating a new payment. We are taking a state machine for the payment and the config that you saw earlier. And now we can just apply process and fail. Therefore, we'll be in the state failed at the end. In comparison to Symfony workflow, we are just creating a payment. Workflow is defined together with the configuration that you seen already and we also apply process and fail but adding the payment as the first argument no matter way you will choose the task is done points are burned you can be happy from yourself kelly especially can be happy from him or herself as he delivers something for the team and this will conclude our chapter two but this was pretty simple usage and as with every story, there are a little bit more adventures coming on. First of all, Kelly encountered the task. When the payment is paid, we want to reduce the inventory. Again, several implementations that are possible already, but let's take a look how we can do it with state machine. First of all, let's take a look into Fizu state machine. This time, the config file will be extended with the callbacks where we'll define that there will be some class used inventory operator, and this class will be pretty straightforward. There will be just invoke function where we'll from the event take a payment itself and we'll be able to do some stuff over it. If we'll take a closer look, this is where the inventory operator is defined. It can be just a pure functional definition, but it's also important to take a look into before of the configuration. We have a callback, which is just a key. Then we have before, more about it just in a few seconds. Then there is the name of the callback, reduce amount, and a few more things later on as well. If we think about callback type, we have three of them, guard, before, and after. Just to make it clear where all of them are called is, let's take a look into the code. First of all, the guard callback is called which will tell us if we even can execute this transition. Then we'll call before callback, 
which means that our class is still in the previous state. The set was not yet called, probably not of the transition. Then we are setting the proper state on the class itself, and then we are calling after callbacks. Second important part of the configuration is on pay, which means that we would like to do it on transition pay. Additional options here are from the state, which means that every time our entity will be leaving some particular state, we'll call this callback or to state, which means that if we will be entering a new state, then this callback will be called. In comparison with the Symfony workflow, the class would be, be doing something similar, but with different event uh, in the invoke method. But also the definition of it is slightly different. You can see that, again, it's more object-oriented. We would need event dispatcher that will be added to our workflow component. And to the dispatcher, we will need to add listener. This listener. First of all, remember, event dispatcher needs to be added to our workflow. And secondly, we'll define our class called on workflow payment enter pay. First of all, you need, we need to take a look that payment is just, is just a name of our workflow. In the Visual State Machine, it was just a name of uh, a value for the key graph. Here, we are putting it as a last argument to new workflow. Uh, construct, to the constructor of workflow. The same value is used for the event. But let's take a look into the whole structure of the event name and draw a uh, theory apart to see how it, how it is constructed. What are the typical possibilities to define such an event? First of all, we could define workflow.playStyle, which is workflow.paid in our case, which means that for all of the workflows that we have in our application, if we'll be going to the place paid, then we will uh, place that, which means that we will enter. Workflow.enter means that every time we'll enter some place, we'll call this callback. The second option is workflow.workflowName.playStack, which can be defined as workflow.payment.enter, which means that every time we will enter any place in our this particular graph, the callback will be called. And the last, the most precise option is workflow.payment.enter.pay, which will define that each time we will be we will be entering this particular place in our graph, then the callback will be called. The other type of places that we can define is leave, which is leaving the current place that we are in, enter, which is called before we will perform operation of setting the new state, and enter, which is just done after the state of the class will be adjusted. What is more, we can also define action types. It works similar way to the previously ex explained stuff, but just with the focus on the transition rather than on the places. So we can have workflow.transition type, which is, for example, transition. And it means that every time there will be some transition in any of our graph, we can do some stuff. What is more, there is a workflow.workflow name payment in our case dot transition type, let's say transition, which means that every time we will do transition in this particular graph, the callback will be called. And the most precise option is workflow dot workflow name payment in our case, transition type, transition dot, let's say pay. So the transition call pay, we'll call this particular callback. Other types of transition are guard, which will allow us to block some stuff, transition, which means that we are just in the middle of making transition. It will be called before we set a new state, completed, which means that we already finished the transition. And there's also an, an announce transition type, which will expose to the application all of the new transition that are available to our state machine, 
to our entity through the state machine. Therefore, it's like broadcasting to your application what are the new possibilities in the app itself. Let's take a look also into in simplified implementation. First of all, we'll be calling leaf, which is just a place type. Then we'll inform the system that we are in the middle of transition, which makes sense. So we need to leave something to make transition, and then we'll enter something, which will be called before we'll do any operation over the class. Then we are changing the class itself. We are announcing that, okay, we entered already a new state because the class changed already. Then we'll announce that the transition is completed. And at the end, we'll announce new states that are available for our state bash. Despite the way you choose to implement it, Kelly also finished the task and the job was done. But during the sprint, there was yet another requirement. We need to allow only administrators to ask to do some stuff on payments. In Visual State Machine, as I told you, there is also a guard callback which can look like this. And the main change before between this callbacks and the previous one is that this one should return Boolean flag. Therefore, it's just enough to return false if we would like to block some particular transition. And we're done. In Symfony Workflow, it works similar way, but this time we are not returning anything from the invoke. There is this special guard event that can be used, which has a set blocked uh, method you can de then define true or false and as previously we can define that only on the workflow called payment we want to block the state block in both cases we also finish this chapter that would end our story and the journey of our hero or heroine nonetheless let's sum up with the state machine libraries or state machine concept, you can define easily possible states and relations between them. With the guards, you can protect business rules, but also you can protect these, these business rules with the definition between transition from one place to another. What is more, you can trigger other services as a reaction to what your application is doing. This is the point that we are using mostly at Cilius, because for example, when the, or when the cart is changing to an order, we need to set, set up a few stuff like order number, some tokens to be able to access, but we also need to create and set proper states of payment and um, shipment, for example. So triggering other classes and other reactions, it's super fun and super powerful functionality of state machine itself. Then you can just rise up or just wire up and use a lot of your application without wiring up everything in one place, just defining the relation between objects itself. What are your opinions about the what will win or what are your perspectives over Visual State Machine and Symfony Workflow? I will leave to you. From my perspective, from the numbers point of view, Symfony Workflow for sure wins. The library is more accessible, has a better support because there is a huge ecosystem behind it, better docs, etc. On the other hand, my personal feeling is that I prefer defining the callbacks in the config file in the terms if you are using full stack frameworks because both of this labor of course have bundled to be used in the symphonic ecosystem but i wanted to present you framework agnostic approach but both of them can be defined in the yam in the configuration file and the, from the perspective of the person that works on the platform that is adjusted by the third party users so someone is just downloading my app and then adjusting to their needs defining the configuration in the yam it's much easier to be overridden, to just turn off some callback to define what may happen and when. While even Dispatcher is another great component from the Symfony ecosystem, I just prefer to do it other way. Another big advantage of the Symfony workflow is that with some additional library, you can print the current state machine, the current workflow in the terms of the graph like this which is a huge advantage in the terms of discussion with the business. 
Of course, we can all agree that our code should be as close to the business as possible. We should express the business needs inside of it. But sometimes it's just easy to print the graph or the state that we can be in in our application, put it on the table and discuss with the business without all of the technical details that we are as developers aware of. But we can focus on the behavior. And I, I would say that this is the key take out from this presentation that sometimes it's worth to focus more on the behavior rather than state and data structures in our code so state machine concept in his it, it went in its heart is for is about the switch between setting up the values so having a drop box which will tell us that the post is in the draft or published state to transition between states so about publishing about uh, withdrawing the post for processing the payment, failing the payment, rather than setting pay pending or failed state. Graph like this make just reduce some burden be in the conversation between developers and the st stakeholders. You can ask, why should you even care if I didn't convince you already? I can only tell you that state machine, maybe this kind of life cycle is in your application one way or another. It's up to you if you will define it explicitly or implicitly. I just prefer to use the state machine in concept for that, but it doesn't mean that you need to use any of the library that they mentioned today. So let's move on for, for summarization to the common issue. First of all, you can also say that, hey, Wukash, but then I put all of the business logic into configuration file instead of encapsulating it in the classes itself. That's not a huge problem. I just wanted to present to you what are the available libraries right now in ecosystem, but it's up to you if you will just define the same concept, the same graph just within your application. And perhaps you will use a secureless approach to announce the current states that are available in your app. This is just, the state machine itself is just a concept. For the thinking about changes in entities or in our objects, like a transition from one state to another about the behavior of them rather than setting the values. You can implement it directly on the code or use one of the libraries that I mentioned, either with the configuration in the YAM or with the RI configuration that will be also held inside of your application. Still, it makes, at least for me, quite clear what will be happening if I have just RI or graph like this. But there is a second really important um, issue that is pretty common with the state machine, and this is how it is currently implemented. In most of the cases, we'll use a set state method or whatever field we'll choose. The problem is that if you will not be aware of that problem, and if you will not be suspicious or um, if you will need to be precise during your code review, you may not spot the change like this. When someone just to move to the proper state called set state instead of state machine. The issue is huge because then it may destroy the current state of your app, especially in not obvious way, like the end state is proper, why where is the back? It appeared that we just didn't call some service that do some other logic and then we have desynchronized application state. Small change, huge problem, so we need to really be aware of that. Set state is no go for any state machine implementation. There are possibilities to also overcome with the configuration as both state machines, Finzo and Symfony Workflow allow you to define how you are setting the value. And perhaps using a reflection make, will make it harder to destroy state machine by just not visible user, not aware user. Nonetheless, all of the code that was presented today is available on my GitHub repository, raw state machine. And that's all from my side. Thank you. Great job, Lucas. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, I no longer have access to the questions. So um... I do not have it also. Uh, we can always uh, move the conversation to the Dutch PHP community Slack, I suppose.
Yep, that was what I was going to suggest. Um, please take your questions over to the Slack channel where Lucas will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much. This was a great talk.